Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, and you're someone who enjoys listening to horror stories, you should join us. Click subscribe and leave a like on today's video before we get started. Let's begin. This is a story of something that happened to my father. He didn't want to write this out, so I decided I'd do it for him. My dad is the type of guy who's quite shy. He doesn't really like to go around, meet friends, or go for social events. He's always been the type of guy that tries to cut conversations short tries to turn away from a neighbour, and just shuts himself inside. Back in 2013, he suffered a pretty bad flare-up of his anxiety. The family fell apart, we lost most of the income seeing as dad lost his job. For a good few months we were living off crap food, we were all depressed and we had to limit all of our outgoings. Otherwise, we'd all be homeless. Once dad had actually recovered from having this flare-up, he needed to find money, and he needed to find it fast. He decided that he would find any job possible. Gas station employee, delivery driver, truck driver, all of the usual bad jobs that people look down on in society, or at least used to. Nowadays, truck drivers are actually seen as pretty cool people. Cleaners, even so much as being a low-level police officer or a security guard. My dad considered virtually everything, except this story would have been plain boring. Just about a family struggling to make ends meet. A family whose father and man of the house was a mess. My dad never got any of those jobs, even though I'm pretty sure he did apply to virtually all of them. Instead, he ended up working for a guy's landscaping company. He replied to an ag on Craigslist, and the rest was history. Now, everything I say here might not be 100% accurate, as my dad's told me this story three times, and each three times I get a different version. I thought to myself that it would be best to ask him to tell this, but once again, he refuses and just goes back to flicking through the channels on TV. When my dad first started working for the landscape company, he knew that there were two other men working with him. It was a small landscaping company and was only established in the early 2000s. The man who runs it we'll call Jeff. He had a helper who we'll call Jeff, too. I don't know. Dad did say their real names, but I don't really want to mention them. So I guess that's the easiest way of remembering both of them. Jeff, who was the owner was the guy that came up with all the decisions, the man with the tools, experience, and the magic hands, as they say. My dad's job was to just listen to him. If he needed something brought from the van, my dad would get it. If he needed some food from the grocery store for lunch, my dad would get it. If he needed some equipment fixing, or some tools bought, my dad would get it. My dad was like Jeff's handyman. Jeff too was on the same level as my dad, as they were both below Jeff, who owned the company. My dad said that initially, things were going completely fine. It was like any old boring landscape job. Most of the customers slash clients were old people in their 70s and even 90s. Bossy old Karens, with the odd middle-aged lady complaining that her lawn was actually mowed wrong. With all that out the way, let's get into Jeff Who. This guy is a highlight of the story because of how peculiar and weird his behaviour is. 
My dad said that this guy was even worse than himself when it came to anxiety and talking to people. He barely looked my dad in the eyes when they first shook hands and greeted each other for the very first time. My dad said that Jeff too seemed nervous, he seemed on edge, and something just didn't sit right in my dad's gut when he first met him. They were only there to work together, obviously, and it's not like they really had a choice anyway. Jeff, the owner, would tell them what to do, and they would do it. Simple. Things were going pretty well. Dad would come home with updates as to how the day went. His whole persona, attitude, and vibe just completely changed. Finally, he was earning some money, even if it wasn't millions. It was more than enough for us to finally stop having to eat crap food and scavenge around. Things changed completely. One morning, my dad was acting strange. I used to get up real early with him, as I used to go on runs before my lectures. It was around 5.30 in the morning, and dad got a call from Jeff, the owner, saying that he wouldn't be into work, because they were sick. His whole family had fallen ill with a stomach bug, and they think they got poisoned from the turkey sandwiches they ate. This meant that dad had no idea what he was doing. Was he going to get paid? Was he supposed to still go in? They'd been working on a project on an elderly lady's property, and they couldn't just stop now. Jeff the owner told my dad that Jeff too had now come round his house to pick the truck up, and that Jeff too would be coming round to pick dad up shortly. I could see the dread on my dad's face, but back then I didn't understand why. Oh shit, not this guy. Really? Jeff too's now coming to pick me up. There's no way I can spend a whole day with this guy. I looked at my dad. I had absolutely no idea what he was on about. But knowing now... It's probably best I didn't. Jeff too turned up in Jeff's truck. My dad ran out and hopped in. They drove down to the lady's property and finished off the rest of the work. It turns out that Jeff the owner would be sick and out of work for at least four more days. During those four days, my dad had some really weird outings with Jeff too. One of those was a huge argument. The second thing, Jeff too, also causing arguments with the lady that owned the property. A woman in her 80s, who the hell could argue with a lady in her 80s? My dad said that she wasn't violent or confrontational in the slightest. But, she'd been going on about how someone broke into her house a few years prior. They stole a whole bunch of her wedding rings. Apparently her husband bought her multiple, ones with diamonds, gold, apparently he spent lots of money. She was telling them the story, and Jeff too just started losing his shit, yelling at her, telling her to go and sit back down in the living room. She backchat him, and it started to go into a huge all-out argument. Dad had to step in and calm them both down. And eventually, Dad took Jeff to outside, and they continued working on the property. Later that evening, Dad came home, and I remember this evening so clearly. He seemed so pissed off, so stressed. It reminded me of the time of just before he lost his job, before the anxiety flare-up. Things managed to fizzle down, and he went to bed early that night without eating dinner. Dad's anxiety has triggers, usually it's things that are in your face, things that are triggering. I don't know, there's really no words I can use to tell you guys what triggers it. If you suffer from it, then you know, but if you don't, you probably don't really understand what I'm saying here. When Dad woke up the next morning, I remember getting up a little earlier than him. I woke up at around quarter to five. I grabbed a coffee and was sipping on it, 
My trainer's already on, ready to go out the door. I notice Dad walking from the corridor into the kitchen. He's on the phone. He was talking away, and obviously I'm assuming it was his boss, Jeff, the owner. It turns out that it was. After Dad hung up, he told me as I continued sipping my coffee that Jeff the owner had rung, saying that Jeff too didn't turn up that morning. He didn't so much as even ring, or return any of his calls or text messages. Jeff the owner was a bit confused what was going on, and maybe thought that Jeff too had overslept, or something had happened. He told Dad to walk to his house, his house being Jeff the owner's house, to then come and get the truck himself. My dad used to drive, before he had to sell the cars in order to basically feed the family. My dad walked around 25 minutes all the way to Jeff the owner's house to pick up the truck to continue the work on the old lady's property. They both just assumed that Jeff too either quit without telling anyone, or he had fallen ill and was in hospital. I know some of you may be thinking why didn't they check on him? Well, to be honest, if it's not clear to you that neither of them liked him, then you're probably not very good at listening. Seeing as dad has to walk to Jeff the owner's property, I figured I'd walk with him half the way. The first 10 minutes of my run was just walking alongside dad, chatting about things. It was nothing major or in detail, no secrets were shared, just simple small talk about how fucking freezing it was. After 10 minutes of walking, I broke into a light jog, gave my dad a quick hug, and waved him goodbye. I ran off into the distance further into the estate as he took a right turn to head out of it. Then, Jeff was waiting at the property. Jeff the owner, not Jeff too. When my dad arrived, Jeff the owner gave my dad the keys while coughing and spluttering all over him with some kind of flu or infection. Apparently the family had stopped vomiting now, but they were still having coughs and high temperatures. This was a nightmare for my dad's work, seeing as now not only did he no longer have the owner, but he also no longer had not even one simple helping hand. My dad got in the truck and fired her up, Jeff the owner showed him round while trying to not pass out from a high temperature. After being told of simples and the whereabouts of all the controls, my dad backed off the Jeff owner's drive and made his way to the elderly lady's property. When my dad arrived at the elderly lady's property, he couldn't find her anywhere. He knocked on the door, rang the doorbell about 20 times and just stood there. He even went round and started banging on some of the windows to see if maybe she had fallen over or hurt herself. It turns out she wasn't even in the property. One of the neighbours saw that my dad was knocking on the windows. The neighbour came over to tell my dad that she was taken to hospital. Last night at 2 in the morning, the neighbour said that the place was surrounded by police and medics. The old lady was found inside of her house with all of her fingers cut off. Yeah, this is vile to even imagine. The neighbours then said she was rushed to hospital for an operation, they had to stop the bleeding, and all the fingers were laid out one by one on the table in front of her. She was tied down and taped to some weird rocking chair in her living room, while dad was there knocking and banging on all her windows. The elderly lady was in theatre, with some surgeon trying to stitch together each one of her fingers. This story f never fails to shock and send the knees trembling. I think that it was Jeff too. And we were right. Dad ended up telling me that Jeff too was detained and arrested, then subsequently charged for the actual assault of this lady. While it wasn't considered attempted murder, it was considered torture. It was considered things that can't be unspeakable. Jeff too really was a sick individual, and somehow my dad saw through it. 
The fact that this old lady, moaning about her wedding rings being stolen, which if anything she has a right to do, triggered Jeff too into such a rage that he'd actually walk all the way back to her property at two in the morning, break in, strap her down to a rocking chair in the living room, and cut her fingers off one by one. That's disgusting. And... I can't believe my dad actually worked beside this guy for weeks on end. Jeff the owner was in deep shit, simply because he employed this guy. I don't know if Jeff too had any criminal history, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did. The landscaping business was shut down and temporarily under investigation. My dad ended up stopping and ended up getting a new job as a consultant in an academy. He didn't actually get paid too badly, and it was almost double what he was being paid with Jeff. To this day, my dad still works pretty hard full time. He's a lot older now, and you can see it. Way more wrinkles and aging marks, and he does occasionally flare up every once in a while with his panic attacks. I love him to bits. I managed to get my master's degree, and I currently have my own apartment with my boyfriend. We're expecting in only two weeks. Wish me luck. And for those of you asking for an update on Jeff too, he's still not out of prison. He isn't due out for another half a decade. And even then, I think it's under specific conditions, where they basically control his whole life. My dad thinks he should never be let out. My dad knew from the beginning that that guy was sick and twisted. The guy I bought a cell phone from on Craigslist ended up stalking me and then eventually trying to kill me. Female, 29 years old, Mississippi. Over the course of my 20s, I went through a fair few share of phones. I don't know how, but I'm a clumsy gal. I tend to usually drop it down the toilet, crack the screen by dropping it on the sidewalk, or just outright lose the damn things. They were expensive as hell to lose, but thankfully, I had quite a few savings, and a fat ass trust fund, thanks to my parents doing quite well. That thanks isn't as important, as the thanks I give the night my dad saved my life. This all begins in around 2018. I was surfing online for a used iPhone, I found one for just under a thousand bucks. This to me was a deal, so I agreed to buy it, basically in the moment. I was using my laptop, as obviously my phone was broken, and I never liked the idea of using even one of my parents' phones. Anyway, they're both Android users, so yeah. Over the course of those few hours, the guy sent me the address, details, and around 15 litten-up photos. I started looking carefully to see if there were any scratches or marks on the phone. I'll be honest, I didn't really look carefully enough, because when I did buy it, there were a whole bunch all on the edge of the phone case. I went down with my dad, because I wasn't about to go on my own to meet some random dude selling a phone. Don't worry, I'm not that dumb like some of these people on these Craigslist horror stories. Like what the fuck you guys, giving strangers your addresses, meeting strangers in the middle of nowhere at 2am? Something tells me these stories aren't even real half the time, or you're just clowns. Dad agreed to take me and we went that evening. The guy only lived a few miles down the road, so it figured out quite nicely. When we arrived, Dad took the lead, as if I'm honest, I was a little scared. I'm usually quite outgoing, I'm more of a optimist, an outrovert, a loudmouth, 
but around guys not so much, especially weird creeps that aren't 10 out of 10 hotties. When my dad went up to the front door, he knocked four times thermally. I thought it was a little weird, as the usual three is my choice. The guy opened the door pretty fast. For some weird reason though, he wouldn't let us in the house. My dad was about to step in, and the guy just stands there blocking his way. Okay, first warning sign. The guy then shuts the door, telling us to wait at the front step. After five minutes of being stood there looking at my dad, eventually the guy reopens the door, stands outside of the house, and shuts the door behind him. Then he shows me the case, with the phone inside it, and a charger wrapped around it. Once I'd looked it over, which was basically one quick glance, I agreed to pay the full amount. I made sure it took charge, and I also made sure that it at least turned on and worked properly. All these three things were ticked, and I was ready to go. I handed him just under a thousand bucks in cash. Me and my dad both courteously shook his hand, turned around, and head back to the car. When we got home, I did my profit check of it. This was without the pressure of the guy staring at me, and being forced to do it stood on his front doorstep which was awkward and stupid. Dad was simply there to just protect me. He has no idea about technology, and I'm the one that got him on the phone in the first place. If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't even have a cell phone. He'd be walking around with a damn brick as a phone, like the dudes in the 1960s on Wall Street. When I did get home, I opened up the box and checked everything over thoroughly. It did take charge, The phone did work, but there were a lot of scratches all over the case on the outside of the phone. Thankfully, the screen looked pretty unchafed, but overall, I was still kind of pissed off that I paid so much for a broken case. I started to transfer all my details from my old phone onto my new one. I didn't have it, but I knew my email, so I re-logged into everything and used my security codes sent to my laptop. If you ever get logged out of your email and you don't remember the password, you're fucked unless you have the main device. Thank god the main device was my laptop, or I would have never been able to log into any of my gmails, any of my snapchat, insta, facebook, twitter, or anything. It would have been a damn near nightmare, but thankfully it wasn't. For a couple of weeks I was using this phone with no problems. That was until I started to get random calls from someone with no caller ID. At first I'd answer the calls, but no one would say anything. There'd be some static on the other side of the line, as if it was just bad signal. To begin with, I used to say, Hello? Hey? Can I help you? Who is this? But by the third or fourth time, I'd answer and just listen. I thought this was some stupid prank being put on by my cousins. Back in the day we used to prank each other. But the weird thing was, that was when we were way younger, like 12 years old. I knew this wasn't that, and instead someone had this phone's number, even though I had replaced it and got a whole new SIM card. Eventually I decided to stop answering these calls. Which, looking back, I probably shouldn't have done in the first place. But oh well, it's too late to say that. Once the call stopped, after around the fourth time they tried, this is because I just didn't answer. Once I stopped ignoring the calls, whoever was doing them then started trying to text me with an actual cell phone number. The number was no longer withheld, and it didn't come up with no caller ID seeing as this was a text. The text was simple, Hey, wanna meet up? I thought to myself as I read these words, Why is this number not saved? And who is it? Thinking it was an old friend or a long lost cousin, I decided to just call the number. After two dials, the other side got picked up. Hello? Hello? Who is this? Um, I'm the guy you bought the phone off. 
I thought you were kind of cute. Want to meet up then? What do you say? Ten seconds silence. Um, yeah, I didn't know it was you. Sorry, I gotta go now. My dad just called me. See ya. Hangs up. This was how the conversation went. And I wouldn't be joking when I said that I thought I was gonna die from pure panic while listening to that guy's voice. It's the guy you bought the phone from. Just hearing these words, I instantly knew it was him. His voice was unique. It had like a weird slur to the end of it. And even though I'd only spoke to him for around two minutes while looking at the phone, I still remembered, and my brain put two and two together. Once I hung up, the guy texts back a couple question marks, as if to say, why'd you hang up? I didn't answer him, immediately blocked his number, but it turns out that wouldn't be the end of any of it. If anything, doing that just made it ten times worse. I told my dad about what happened, and he said that he'd go around to the guy's house and have a word with him. When he said this to me, I begged him not to do it. Eventually, after begging him all day for around 20 hours straight, he decided not to, and made an agreement with myself and mum that he wouldn't go to that guy's house. I told dad that I blocked his number, and even told him no, that I didn't want to meet up. He hadn't threatened me, he hadn't been horrible, although it was kind of creepy. He must have just got the number from the phone, or somehow tracked it because it was his old one. I don't know. Things actually got way worse from here, from cars following me home, to seeing the same guy in the parking lot at the grocery store. It turns out the phone was bugged, and that this guy had some really weird obsessive crush on me. Everything topped it when one night a house was broken into by four guys. One of the guys was Derek. This was the guy who sold me the iPhone, and he wasn't willing to take no for an answer. Somehow, he'd managed to find three friends. They stormed up the stairs. I woke up pretty slowly, with my brain processing that there were some weirdly unnatural loud noises coming from outside the door. It was a little after three in the morning. I wake up to the sound of three heavy footsteps coming up the stairs. Then, next thing I know, my bedroom door goes flying off the hinges as if someone's kicked it down. What was creepy is they came straight to my room, as if they knew exactly where I was. Somehow, they had pinpointed the signal of my phone. What happens next is absolutely terrifying. Even reciting this is something that sends shivers down my spine. As I open my eyes fully, and try to process that my door had just basically flown off the hinges, three fully masked men enter my bedroom. Two of them grab me, another one, which must have been Derek, grabs me by the head. They pick me up by all my limbs and drag me out of the bedroom. This is when I start to go unconscious, as I'm pretty sure at some point one of the guys put some cloth over my mouth, which must have had something on it. I don't remember very much after this, except hearing the sounds of my dad's gunshots ring out across the house. My dad shot two of them dead, then seriously injured Derek, but he managed to get away. The police later apprehended him. They had so many units that they lost count. The helicopter ended up locating him on the run. He was sprinting through people's gardens while losing pints of blood from his stomach and shoulder. It's a shame the guy didn't bleed to death. But I'm forever grateful for what my dad did. And it was probably best that he didn't go to their house that time, seeing as they could have killed him. Derek and his friends slash helpers weren't armed, they didn't even have a weapon. When they were interviewed by police, they came across as more like nerds than actual hardened criminals. This is a good idea, a good idea to never buy a phone on Craigslist, unless you're absolutely certain that one, it actually works and isn't broken, Two, isn't bugged and won't be tracking you. And three, isn't being sold to you by an absolute creep 
who has three friends willing to risk jail time just to try and abduct you. I got a job with a security contracting company through Craigslist. My job was to basically do a night shift for around 12 hours. I started my shift at 6pm and would often get off at around 5am or 6am depending on what my boss would tell me. My job was to simply guard a whole bunch of bottles of water. Yeah, may sound a bit stupid. But this water was in the thousands of bottles. What was it for, you might ask? Well, it was for a marathon race. It was in New York, so security was pretty tight. The place is teeming with crackheads, homeless people, and just a bunch of wackheads. My job was to stop the people from stealing the water, as it was for the runners who had paid hundreds of dollars just to enter the race. It was a boring job. I'd never done security in most of my life, and other than one little job at the door of a nightclub, that's it. I had a little pop-up camping chair. I'd sit in it all night long, looking around, left, right, side, down. I turned into a robot, an eagle perched up on the edge of a tower. My job was to just stay on lookout for 12 hours straight and try not to fall asleep, which I nearly did around five times. My nearest colleague was at the drink station five kilometers down the street. So, as you can imagine, it was a pretty lonely task. When I grew up, I dropped out of school with no qualifications or grades. Most of my time in my teenage years was spent getting high and drunk. They were fun times, but they came back to bite me big time, and as I sat there in the freezing cold streets of New York, guarding a hundred thousand bottles of water from literal homeless crackheads, I started to reconsider my choices in my life. My mum and dad had been hard-working honest people, and over the course of their careers, Although they had the help of inflation and appreciation of assets, they still worked hard and got themselves to where they are. I just didn't think properly. My head wasn't screwed on, as my dad used to say. It was day four. This job was only due to last around a week. Seeing as their race would take place, the runners would drink all the water, and then everything would be cleared away. On the fourth night, something really weird happened to me. I was just sat there in my camping chair, stretching my legs out along the sidewalk, casting my gaze upon thousands and thousands of bottles of water and plastic. As I look up, there are a couple of cars just parked on the edge of the sidewalk. Every now and then, there was one weird looking dude or woman who would just walk by. Some, I assumed, were night shift workers too, working at perhaps hospitals, or different office buildings. Whilst I looked up this time though, my attention wasn't arised by a person. Instead, there was a dog. Just one dog all by itself. It was staring directly at me from the opposite side of the sidewalk. We locked eyes and just kept staring at each other for what felt like around 10 minutes. I don't know what it was about me that made the dog curious, but I felt a little uneasy about the fact that there was no owner in sight. There are a couple stray dogs in New York, but way less than there used to be, especially back in my mum and dad's era. I thought I needed to call someone, but I was too tired, too lazy, just couldn't really be asked. This dog looked like a type of shepherd, the German shepherds. It was big, 
which was a little more worrying. I know these dogs are capable of hurting people, but this dog seemed more curious than anything else. After staring at me for around 10 minutes, the dog looks left and right and then decides to just start strolling away. I caught a few more glimpses as the legs of the dog go underneath the cars that are parked up. Then, the dog just vanishes. I sit there chuckling to myself, thinking how much weirder could this night get. The fourth shift was over, the fifth one the following day started, and the same dog came back again. Except this time, the dog didn't sit on the other side of the sidewalk staring at me, like it had done before. This time the dog walks over, and sits in the middle of the road, way closer than the day before. I started trying to get it to come over, by rustling my fingers in front of me on the floor. I started making all these noises with my mouth, like dog owners do. I didn't know how to act, we'd never had dogs in our lives, not even a cat or anything, hamster, birds, rats, we never had any pets, and no one in my family did either. I was clueless how to act, and I could tell this dog was either hungry or wanted a drink. I kept making those weird dog owner noises, the type of noises that I see them make when they walk their dogs around the park off the leash. The noises weren't working, instead the dog just sat there. The traffic in this road was virtually zero most of the night past 1am. It was around 4 in the morning and the dog would just sat there still staring at me half an hour later. By this point there was one guy that had walked past. He looked and called out asking me if it was my dog. I said no bro and then just chuckled at him. Eventually I came up with the idea of trying to offer the dog some food. On these night shifts I started bringing myself some chips and things like some snacks. I opened up a pack of a Kinder Bueno, this is basically chocolate with some weird Nutella fondant inside. I crack open a finger and then suddenly realise how fucking dumb I am. Never give dogs chocolate. Even being a dog owner I know that. I quickly eat the whole thing myself and realise that I can't give the dog anything to eat, unless I poison it in the process. The next thing I thought of doing was offering it some water. But the second I moved over to any of the water bottles, he completely got up and started running away from me in fear. I got scared, but more pissed off at the fact that I thought he was going to bite me or charge at me. That was the end of that. He didn't come back for the rest of that night, and I went home around 7 in the morning after my boss came back and changed hands. The following night the exact same thing happened again, except this time I managed it. When I finally got the dog to come over, I had poured out a bunch of the water into my hand. To my absolute disbelief, this German Shepherd that looked around middle age or maybe slightly younger, came over and began to lap up the water within my palms. This method's pretty crap as the water just drains through the bottom of your fingers, no matter how tightly you cup them. But it allowed him to get enough water and whenever I ran out, I just kept doing it. The dog got fully comfortable, and it got to the point where he'd had enough water, so I emptied the cup after the fifth try. After this, I was expecting the dog to walk away, or maybe run off in fear now it was no longer thirsty. But the opposite happened. Instead, the dog decides to curl up at my feet and go completely to sleep. For another four hours, this dog stayed completely asleep underneath my feet. That was until my boss Diaz came for the change of hands. Even at around six in the morning, where the traffic in New York, specifically this road, was building up pretty badly. The dog was awake with his eyes open, but stayed under me as if I was his owner. When Diaz arrived though, it was different. Diaz got closer than any of the other pedestrians, and soon enough, the dog ups and bolts away. There was only two more nights left, and I felt like I needed to take this dog home as it was clearly, well, on its own. 
It was a stray dog, and I think overall, I felt sad for it more than anything. The next night was even worse. The dog came back, I gave it more water, and this time bought some dog treats. Then, he went to sleep again, underneath my feet. I pet him a lot more, and he was completely friendly. He didn't even smell bad at all, and his coat was pretty clean. Nothing made any sense, and the owners were nowhere to be found. This dog was relatively newly stray, I believe, seeing as how good a condition it was in. This time the dog stayed with me for around 6 hours. When I went to get up, Diaz came over and the dog tried to stay with me, but began growling at Diaz and snarling. This is when I told him off, and he tried to snap at me and then started running away. There was one more night left, so if I was going to do anything, I'd have to do it now. Well, that was unless I planned on keep going back every single early hour of the morning, even after the marathon had done. The last night was when everything changed. There was no sign of him anywhere. Even at around 4 in the morning, usually he'd come at around 1 or midnight. But there was no one. There was no sign of any pedestrians. Or him. It came to the end of my shift. Diaz took over. And I made the walk back to the parking lot to get in my car and drive home. The walk to the parking lot is like a public parking lot where you get free parking if you have a pass. It was either that or I try and fight for a space around the community parking. Which is just at the side of the road. Doing that you can risk citations if you don't have this stupid badge in your front window. So I figured I'd just take the 15 minute walk every time. On the walk back I was exhausted. I couldn't wait to get home and get to bed. But more importantly, I wondered where the dog had gone. I hoped he was okay. And I felt kind of bad inside. That was until I turned the corner off into the back street. To get to the parking lot, you have to walk up this alleyway. As I was walking up the alleyway, I noticed a figure up ahead. It looked like a dog or some kind of body slouched in the side. The figure was laying down and wasn't moving. As I got closer, I almost felt like bursting out into tears. Laying there was him. I checked for a pulse and tried to wake him up, but he was dead. There was no sign of anything that had happened. He just wasn't breathing, and his heart wasn't beating. I reported it to animal control. They came and took his body away. I wanted to take his body, bury it, but they wouldn't let me. I wasn't the rightful owner, and it turns out the people who were just abandoned him in the streets. I'm sorry to ruin your evening. This isn't really a horror story, but it is depending on how you look at it. For him it was anyway. I never even knew his name, but I guess I'll call him Aslan. I've always liked that name. Thank you for listening. Hey guys, and thank you for making it to the end of today's video. This is the channel host. Please leave a like if you haven't already. Can we try and get 1000? I think that would be a record for this channel. Also, thank you for subscribing if you're new. I try and upload every single night. Brand new horror stories never uploaded to YouTube ever before. Unlike the other channels that tend to all use the same stories from the same reddit forums, I believe that mine are unique, unheard of, and, also, worth sharing. Please if you can, share my videos with your friends, family, and anyone you know who likes listening to stories. 
Thank you for all the support, and although I rarely respond to comments, I do read every single one of them. Thank you everyone, take care, and I'll see you in tomorrow evening's video.